20 to 1 on for the victory. The knockout also odds on 5 to 4 points. Belger, well, he's the best if you're optimistic. 33 to 1 the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Hatton Promotion, sponsored by Vimax Nutrition and Metro Motor Claims, live and exclusive on Sky Sports HD Ringside Live. Proud to present 12 three minute rounds of boxing for the Welterweight Championship of Europe. The officials have been appointed by the European Boxing Union and the British Boxing Board of Control. EBU supervisor at ringside is Mr. Igor Mazarov. British Boxing Board of Control student in charge, Jeff Bolter. Timekeeper at the bell is Colin Roberts from Halifax. Matchmaker, Richard Pogson. The three scoring judges at ringside this evening are Alexander Kalinkin from Russia, Venceslav Nikolov from Bulgaria, and Francisco Alonso Rosa from Spain. Finally, when the action commences, the referee in charge of the action is Mr. Robin Dopierre from Rouen, France. Introducing to you firstly this evening, the challenger. Boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the black lush shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled on the championship limit, 10 stone, 7 pounds. His excellent undefeated record reads, 26 contests, 25 wins. Four of those wins coming by way of knockout with one draw. Presenting from Lugano, Switzerland, Roberto Ruby Belga. And opposing him, boxing out of the red corner, wearing his familiar black colour shorts trimmed with gold. At the weigh-in yesterday, he also scaled on the championship limit, 10 stone, 7 pounds. His excellent record reads, 46 contests, 40 wins, 15 of those wins coming by way of knockouts, only 4 defeats and 2 draws. Tonight he makes the second defence of his title, presenting the welterweight champion of Europe from Manchester Magic. You respect the rule as a referee, okay? Make a good fight. Well, the two touch gloves and Matthew Hatton back in his corner having final words of advice from his trainer, Bob Shannon. He said that here tonight, I want to make a statement and to prove that I'm world class. He's already ranked number seven in the WBA ratings in the world. Roberto Belger. Undefeated, as you've heard, and I suspect that Hatton is going to want to show that he's the aggressor and want to put this Swiss fighter onto the back foot where the suspicion is that he's less confident. Yeah, well, I think Belgia has been uh, carefully looked after throughout his career, uh, but it's time to make a move now, 31, and they probably feel that they can't feel that they won't get a better chance of winning the European title than against Matthew. But uh, the good plan is when the visitors are coming over, get them onto the back foot straight away, make an early impression, and that's what Hatton's doing right from the off. Well, that's a decent left hand he caught that Belgium with, almost on cue. I thought his performance against Yuri Nuznenko when he was put down in the opening round to get up and regroup and win as well as he did against a guy who's got a genuine world rating to do that so effectively, it spoke volumes about how much he has improved as a fighter. Yeah, but it showed the character too, although he's always had character, but not too often as he had to show that. The Belgia trying some uh, adventurous right hands in the opening round here, so... Obviously, he's not just here as a tourist, he sees this as a massive opportunity. It is so. a terrific opportunity for him, it also represents a, a step up in class, but we're told he's got a re... Oh, he's caught off balance there, as much as anything, but the speed of the punch of Hatton just shocking the Swiss visitor. Like in a wild right hand, uh, Hatton's throwing at the moment, just wants to settle down, just take his time. Don't be too eager to impress, long way ahead. But he's landing some nice little punches here. And more quality coming from Hatton in the early round here. Oh. 
Hatton got himself into great shape. Probably an appropriate time as well to say that Ricky looks pretty well as well. I was uh, not seen him for a while and he really does look as though he's got himself into much better shape. He's been spending time in the gym and he tells me that he himself has lost about two and a half stones. Yeah, he's looking terrific. It's good to see. And, uh, but uh, Matthew is the one with business on his hands tonight and he started positively. Maybe could move towards a world title shot if he can win this impressively. Vercheslav Sedchenko is the man, the WBA champion. And who knows, maybe also a possible fight against the man sitting at ringside with us, Junior Witter, at some point. It could certainly happen. Well, last few seconds of the opening round. And happened for me doing enough to take the first three minutes. Belgia looking to establish himself in this opening round, but it's Hatton who's looked the sharper and landing the more purposeful blows. Yeah. And double jab, double jab's going. Well, Matthew Hatton but is being told in the corner there, right. use your jab, that that's the key, Jim. Well, he stopped Belgia several times in the opening round with a good solid jab. Belgia looks a little bit all over the place, he looks very loose defensively. So if uh, Hatton just keeps things nice and tight, nice and compact, I'm sure chances will come to let the bigger punches go. Belgium starting fast in this second round. Five times Swiss amateur champion. Never lost as a professional, drew his last fight. But Hatton has that sturdier look about him. I get the impression that Belgium won't cope with pressure too well as he, as he backs off. You know, he, he looks out of sorts, not knowing quite what to do. He likes to come forward, likes to wing the wide punches. So I think if Hatton could get him on the back foot, maybe start taking charge. Robin, Early days. Robin Dolpierre, experienced French referee, keeping a close watch on proceedings as Hatton going in and getting his head right into the face of Belgium, but uh, referee not intervening. Hatton wants to just tidy things up a little bit. He's, you know, he's leaping in a little bit. He wants to box his way in, just tighten things up. As I say, Belgia doesn't have the best of defences. And he uh, doesn't cope with punches coming at him all that well. So he needs a cool head. He needs to tidy things up a little bit. It's just becoming a little bit ragged here. Well, two of them already have been ticked off for allowing the heads to come into the argument. He's got the feeling that the greater power of punch lies with Hatton. Only four stoppages in those 25 wins for Belgia. Suggests that he doesn't have single one-punch knockout power, and Hatton will know that. I mean, a couple of right hands he let go at the beginning of the, the first and the second round. It looked a little bit tasty, but the record suggests that he's not a puncher, but uh, you don't want to find out. Uh, Hatton just wants to tighten up. This is better, but more method in what he's doing now. The impression that Belgium felt the weight of that right hook which thudded into the side of his head. A little bit untidy though, and Hatton being told off this time for holding on, dragging his opponent on. Yep, still a little bit jerky in his boxing at the moment, uh, Hatton. He needs to find a smoothness to settle things down. He's maybe just a little bit over eager to impress. Boxing at home here, he's the, the star attraction. Just wants to take his time, he's in too much of a hurry, I think. Facially, Belgia looks a little bit like Pauli Malinagi. He's not uh, quite shown Malinagi's fleetness of foot and style so far. Well, that's a good body shot. See, Belgia just kind of puts his head down and swings the right hand over the top. And when he lets punches go, he is wide open. That is where Hatton can really capitalise. So just keep it tight, catch the, the swing then drill home the short punches. So closing seconds of the second round, and another round surely to Matthew Hatton. Big night for the whole of British boxing, December the 11th. Great Britain versus the world. We're live from a bumper bill, starting in Liverpool, the brightest stars of Britain in action. Then it's off to Germany for Derek Chisora against Klitschko. And rounding off the night, Vegas debut for Amir Khan. Special event, Sky Box Office, December the 11th.
Third round underway here. Matthew Hatton defending his European welterweight title. Hatton in the gold and black shorts. Magic Matthew Hatton. There's the right hand. He's, he let it go early again in this round. That seems to be the plan at the beginning of every round. So it landed flush, didn't budge Hatton, so that's good news. Well, the referee's being a fairly busy man so far. Styles have not really gelled. Now, some of the action has been a little bit scrappy. So just a, oh, a lovely body shot. So more of those. See, this fellow's wide, he throws wide punches, so he does offer target. So just a little bit of concentration and a cooler head will work well for Hatton. That's better. That's better. Coming down the middle and he felt the weight of that punch, Belger. Just for a moment, wanted to cover up and buy a second or two. He wings his punches in wide. Yeah, they're arm punches, there's no real weight behind them. Oh, lovely, lovely punching there from Hatton. See, the chances will come, let him have his little burst. And then let the punches go. He's all over the place, he's wide open, really vulnerable when he's throwing punches of his own. Oh, lovely shot. Oh, good shot indeed, it's the body shot. And Belger's down, and I wonder whether he's going to get up. He's down, I think he's going to take the count. It's all over! It's all over here in the third round. Matthew Hatton has retained his title, and he did it with a left hook. He did it with a body shot. Junior Witter sitting alongside me. It might not have been particularly pretty before that, but the punch he uncorked to finish Belger is still down. He's still down. That punch was a good one. Oh, most definitely. Um, he, just, he slipped, he leaned into it, and he got some real power into it. And it, it's exactly what he needed to do. Um, the right hand was working very well for him when he stayed up nice and straight, um, but he slipped in with a pearl of a shot. Didn't look pretty early on, Jim, but you sensed it was just a matter of time. Yeah, I think uh, Matthew was just a little bit eager to please, but you always had the feeling the longer it went that the better things were going to go. He always looked stronger than Belgia. Looked more purposeful, Belgia didn't have a great defence, swinging punches all over the place, he was very vulnerable, I said a couple of times he offered plenty of target to, to, to Matthew, and uh, that was a tremendous body shot to finish it. One of those shots, as soon as it landed, you knew it was over, tremendous. He said he wanted to send out a message to prove that he was world-class junior, has he done that? Well, he's proved his European class. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a great win, he bullied the man around the ring, and he got him in the car, well, he got on the ropes and he landed a terrific body shot. And you've said, I know, in the past, you've gone on record as saying he would be an easy stepping stone for you. Do you still go along with that? If he wants to challenge me, there's no doubt I will step up and take him out. Well, that would be interesting. Let's have another look at how it finished, Jim. Yep, well, tremendous finish. As I say, you always got the feeling the longer it went, the more it would suit Hatton, and, and that was the shot. As soon as it landed, you knew it was over. Behind the elbow, he was trying, he, I think he was expecting the uppercut, he cupped his hands in front of his face, Matthew saw the opportunity, saw the target behind the elbow, dug it in, full power behind it, bang on the ribs, the, the part of the body that you can't toughen up, and it just completely took everything away from Belgia. It was a quality shot, very much so, and that would have, that would have hurt many a fighter. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, he proved he's a, a puncher at the weight. Um, it was a great shot. Spat out his gun shield there, and at that moment, you knew he wasn't going to yep. get up, Jim. Yep, can hardly get a breath. I mean, we have to keep it all in context. I mean, Matthew was pretty heavily favoured to, to win tonight and retain his title. But I think that the performance last time out against Nuznenko proved he deserves a world title class. The performance tonight underlines that, and hopefully they can organise it soon, because this is the best form he's ever shown in his whole career, and the time is right to take that opportunity. Well, we'll be hearing from him shortly, no doubt. And here comes confirmation of what was, in the end, a pretty straightforward, albeit spectacular, win for Matthew Hatton. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 32 seconds of round number three, referee Robin Dolpierre has reached the count of ten. Your winner by way of knockout, and he is still the welterweight champion of Europe from Manchester. Magic Matthew Hatton.
knocking on the door of a world title shot next, Matthew Hatton. We'll be hearing from him in a couple of minutes' time and we'll get reaction from our studio guests, Jamie Moore and Johnny Nelson. That's next. It's Great Britain versus the world, marathon night of boxing, and I'll be one of the stars in lighting up Liverpool on December 11th. Tune in. He's looking forward to it, and why not? The likes of Nathan Cleverley, Kel Brook, Matthew Macken, alongside James DeGale as he hopes to wrench the Lonsdale Bell from Paul Smith. Kicking off Great Britain versus the world. Three venues around the globe, starting in Liverpool, then Derek Chisora aims to become the world heavyweight champion out in Germany against the giant Ukrainian Vladimir Klitschko. We also show Amir Khan's Vegas debut against Argentinian banger Marcus Maidana. Three venues, one special event on Skybox if it's HD on December the 11th. We cannot wait. Here, Matthew Hound makes an impressive saying defense of his European title, knocking out the previously unbeaten Roberto Belgia. Three rounds. We can hear from Hatton now, ringside with John Rawling. You must be uh, pretty pleased with the outcome. Very pleased with the outcome. Um, and it's all about preparation. The preparation for this fight was absolutely perfect. And uh, when you prepare right, you know, you produce the goods on, on the night, and that was the case tonight. What a lovely body shot. It was a bit of a bit of a Hatton special, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, I don't know where I'd got that from, but you know, this man to me. Uh, to, to me right, you know, fantastic body puncher. And I've always been a, a good body puncher, but for some reason I've neglected it. Um, why that is, I don't know. When it, when it produces results like that, I wish I'd have thrown it more often. Well, it was certainly a cracker. You said you wanted to show you a world-class. That was definitely a world-class punch. And I think over the last few fights, you know, I've, I've shown different things. With Branco showed that the speed, you know, the movement, just by outboxing, outboxed the world-class fighter pretty, pretty comfortably, really. Against Nazenko, you know, showed he had the balls. He put me down heavily in the first round. I got up and, and you know, won the fight pretty clearly. And then tonight, you know, I knew it was a, a league above this fella. Even though he was an unbeaten fighter, unbeaten in 26 fights, I've just gone in there tonight and absolutely destroyed him. So I've showed I can punch as well. Ricky, you must be very proud of him. Where does he go from here? Well, he's, he's slowly but surely, he's edging towards that world title fight. He's got a very healthy world ranking as we speak at the moment. But uh, from where he's come from, you know, from a few years ago, as we keep saying, you know, if you remember, he was struggling at six rounders and eight rounders. He lost a couple of them along the way. You know, we beat Gianluca Branco, who had only lost to Gatti and Cotto, then beat a former world title channel in, in Nezenko, and then he's just stopped an unbeaten fighter in four rounds. So he's, he's going in the right direction, and he's, he's a massive, massive success story. We're so three, proud three of him. Rounds, you're doing I, 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 I have to say, <laughs> and you, you've, you've heard this name raised so many times over the years, he's sitting at ringside again. Junior Witter, is that a possibility? Uh, I don't see why not. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's... Uh, Matthew's really knocking on the door for a world title fight now. I mean, and uh, he'll have a, I don't know whether he'll have a mandatory next or whatever. We'll have to sit down with the European Union and see what's, uh, what's on the agenda. But, you know, Junior's uh, not fought for 12 months. He's looking for a way back in. You know, and Matthew's making real headway now. And obviously, with the history there, that, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely not a possibility. It, it could happen, but we we'll just have to all sit down, see what the Union pick have. That was his voluntary, so I've got a feeling he might have a mandatory yet, but we'll have to just see. Matthew, that's for the future. For now, very well done. Thank you. Cheers.